Hello everybody, this is Mithril Zenith, and welcome back to yet another 15 minute tier list. Today is Fire Emblem 7, the first Fire Emblem officially released in the West, and the first one that most people have played. Not myself, I played this like fourth. I started with Path of Radiance, then went to Sacred Stones, then Radiant Dawn, and then eventually came back to FE7. But... It certainly is an interesting game, and it certainly has some interesting implications for tier lists. Um, for the record, this tier list will be including Lin Mode. So if you play with Lin Mode, this is how the tier list would look. Most tier lists you'll find on the internet consider Hector Hard Mode without Lin Mode. I will consider Lin Mode into Hector Hard Mode. Um, so without further ado, let's get on with it. Starting with Lin, I think that she's perfectly decent. She has some problems, like her late promotion, um, like her relative fragility. If you play Lin mode, some of that fragility goes away, some of that weakness goes away because the extra levels boost her up quite a bit, her uh, skill, speed, and HP. Um, Monikati is a great weapon. Uh, she is able to do a decent amount, and then she'll be stuck before promotion. But she's not a terrible unit by any means. She's not a great unit. She's not a great unit, but she's not a terrible unit, and by the end, if you get lucky with her level ups because she has a ton of room to grow, she can become a pretty effective unit. She just doesn't get any of those traditionally powerful things like 1-2 range, which is very important in FE7 because there are a lot of ranged enemies in some chapters. Um, while we're on the Lord train, I'm going to... Uh, do I put Elliot on the same tier? I guess I'll put Elliot on the same tier. He's weaker as a base lord. He, the Rapier is not nearly as good as the Manikati. He doesn't have the several chapters on his own to grow, but he gets a better promotion in. He gets a mount, he gets lances, which means he can use javelins, which means that he um, just becomes a lot more solid for the final chapters of the game. Right around the time that you really need him to improve, he can. And so that's why he kind of gets boosted up to that same rank. Hector is pretty well solidly in A tier, so long as you're doing his mode. He's just a really solid lord, axes are a great weapon type in FE7, and his bulk allows him to do a lot of things. Suffers from a late promotion, suffers from uh, too much con to really be carried by most units, but he does solidly. He just does what he needs to do. Coming at the end with Athos, he's an amazing unit, but he's only around for one chapter, so I'm going to give him C tier as well. Uh, this is a 15 minute tier list, so let's get on to the meat of it. If you're playing Lin mode, caveat, if you're playing Lin mode, Kent and Sane are S tier units. If you're not, they're still A tier. Uh, I don't know whether Kent or Sane is higher. I think Sane personally is higher because he has the skill and uh, the speed and strength, whereas Kent tends to have more skill and defense, which. Uh, offensive, defensive, offense normally wins when it's two of the best stats in the game. Um, speaking of which, I'm also going to consider Lowen for S tier. He just kind of is always a consideration. Um, but I'm going to put him in A tier. Actually, I might put Hector in B tier then. Um, just because Lowen, with the availability of promotion and the availability of other things, just can do so much more. Um, let's get this one out of the way though. Marcus is the easy S tier. Right now, I'm trying to solo the game with Marcus, and I think I got softlocked, not because Marcus can't handle the enemies, but because he can't be everywhere he needs to be at once, and if you're soloing with Marcus, then Hector gets left alone, or you have to carry Hector, which weakens Marcus enough that he actually dies. But I've gotten near to the end game. My biggest problem is that Hector and just running out of items, running out of weapons, because of the rule set that I use, I can't buy stuff with other units. Um, and so I ran out of items. <laughs> so yeah. Vita, um, if Vita came earlier, I would give her a better ranking, but because she comes so late, once again, I have to put her in C tier. She is a great unit, but you only have her for like five chapters at most. Though I guess that does put her above Athos. I'm going to give her B tier just because she is such a solid unit. But as we'll see, there are a lot of other solid pre-promotes. Um, such as Jafar, who's also a B-tier unit. He comes late. Actually, you, you, you get Jafar at the same time as Vita. Um, Jafar, you, you get Jafar one chapter earlier. 
technically, one or two chapters earlier. Um, Jafar is able to double and one round the Valkyries in uh, Cog of Destiny, uh, which makes him a solid unit, if only for that, if only for player phase, because that map is nothing but mages outside of a couple of like heroes. And then Vita's crew. Uh, Jafar's pretty solid unit. Merlinus, how do you rank Merlinus? <laughs> no, seriously, how do you rank Merlinus? I apologize for that sneeze. How do you rank Merlinus? I don't know. Nino, she's not unusable, like a lot of people say. Um, she's good for her level. She's bad for the chapter she comes in. <laughs> Once again, another sneeze. Good for her level, bad for the chapter she comes in. Um, and things don't get better. You have six chapters, really, to use Nino. And she can become good, but she is oftentimes considered not worth the investment because you have other mages who are better, such as Pent. Pent is an S tier because he comes with the stats to do anything you want. He can staff bot as well. His only restriction is that he's lower. He comes later. Um, but he comes in around the same time as you get your first promotion item for one of the lords. Uh, Pent is a great unit. Matthew, there is actually a lot for Matthew to do as a thief, so you want to train him a little bit. You want to give him some speed. You want him to be able to steal several key items, including the guiding ring off of the shaman boss and the, um, on the boats. And there's also several chests and doors for him to unlock. A lot of options for Matthew. Um, he's a B tier because his promotion is so late and it's only a thief promotion, so it's only into Assassin, which is not a fantastic class. Um, he has his uses, uh, certainly, but he's not going to be, like, a major combat unit. Dart, I'm not going to hold against him the fact that his promotion costs the Ocean Seal, uh, because you generally get enough money otherwise, and unless you're playing for ranking, it doesn't matter. Um, this is not tiering for ranking specifically. Um, I'm gonna give Dart B tier because he can take a little bit to get going, but once he gets going, my goodness, you have a quite the berserker on your hands. The only reason he's B tier and not better is because someone like Hawkeye exists. Who do I give Hawkeye S tier? I think I'm gonna give him top of A tier. He's just a really solid unit. His only weakness is really that he can't get all the places you want him to get because he's so heavy, he's so big. Uh, but you get a near unkillable, you know, near unkillable berserker who just one rounds pretty much everything, because he comes in with like 50 HP and like almost 20 speed. He's great. He's great. Oswin, he is what an armor knight should be. Uh, an early game armor knight. He's just a wall that you can't kill. <laughs> what else is there to say? He's great. He's slow sometimes. He can struggle a little bit. He's just a solid unit all around though. Can't really give him more than B tier because of the armor knight low movement. And the fact that he takes up a Knight's Crest to promote, which you'll generally want for Kent, Sane, and Lowen if you're playing Lin mode. Uh, because they're all just such good units. Urk, I'm going to give B tier as well, because he's a solid mage. You can do with him what you want. Um, there's nothing too spectacular about him. Actually, kind of all the magic units are like that. Nothing too spectacular about them, but you can get them to where they need to be. Magic is pretty effective, and... They just do their jobs really well. Uh, Louise, I'll put C tier because she can do a decent amount, especially against Wyverns, especially against um, the Mages and Valkyrie spam. Against the, so many of the 1 2 range units, you can position her so she can have an enemy phase as well as a player phase. Um, I think no unit that comes that late and is locked to bows is really going to get better than a C tier, but she manages to have some decent output. Uh, Guy, I'll put C tier as well. Uh, maybe I'll put B tier, I don't know. He's good as a unit stat-wise goes, but once again, the lack of 1-2 range in a game so full of archers and mages is a problem. Uh, speaking of archers, uh, Will and Rebecca. If you're playing Lin mode, I'm going to do it like this because Will has extra chapters to do some stuff and gets extra stats and tends to be a little bit better. Rebecca is just a problematic level 1 archer that takes forever to level up and rarely gets strength. There you have it. Raven is fantastic. He's a great unit. Hard mode gives him bonuses, but even without those, he has... Once again, he has sane-like growth, strength and speed, and that's all you need. 
He can sometimes suffer with his defense getting a little bit fragile. Um, but once you promote him to hero, he gets hand axes, so he gets that 1-2 range option. He's just a good unit all around. Speaking of good unit all around, Priscilla I'll give A tier as well. Um, because staff experience is not nearly as hard to get in FE7 as it is FE6. And she gets great speed, tends to get good speed. And so once you promote her, she'll start doubling things with fire. And then she becomes a decent combat unit, as well as a fantastic staff bot. Who can get around places, rescue people, all sorts of good things. If you are playing Lin mode, Florina is potential S tier. Because if you give her things like the Angelic Robe and the Energy Ring, uh, she's the best user of those because none of the other units really need them. And she can become just a flying machine. If you are not giving her those items, then she's at least an A tier. If you're not playing Lin mode, then she's like a B or a C tier. Uh, but if you include Lin mode on this and give her those items, or at least the potential of giving her those items, she is an S tier. Fiora, I'll give her a B tier. Um, there's a lot of to do with flying. Um, she can do it pretty well. Uh, her slightly higher con makes her slightly better in combat, but slightly worse at carrying people, and so it limits her fire utility a little bit. Do I give her really B tier, though? I think I'll give her A tier. As well as Heath and uh, Farina. Again, I'm not counting money against them. They're all flyers, they're all solid units, and flying utility matters a lot in several of the endgame maps, where rivers and mountains are everywhere. Uh, a unit like Corel that comes in and is pretty good, but just kind of, eh? I'll give him D tier. Maybe I'll give him C tier. Because he's fine, he just isn't impressive. I think a unit like Carla is more worthy of something like F tier. Maybe D tier. Because she can... Uh, no, she comes in, she only has two chapters, really, to shine. And those two chapters are so full of enemies that she just can't really do much against. She can be a decent filler unit if you really need her to be, but she's never going to be super impressive. Uh, Bartray and Dorcas, I'm going to give C tier just because axes are a good type, are a good weapon type. And even though they start out not really being able to double, they can eventually grow to the point where they're soloing enemies on their own. I think pretty much most units can, uh, only the units below them can't, which is why I'm putting them in D and F tier. Um, because of their growth potential, because of their good availability, they're in C tier. Just know that you're, what you're getting into with them is not fantastic units out the gate. They're units that are going to be filler, pretty much for the most part, unless they get some really lucky speed growths, at which point they can transform into pretty solid units, like Harkin, who only avoids S tier because of his late joining time and because he doesn't offer something like the amazing staff utility that Pent also offers in addition to his combat utility. Arkin is incredible for combat, axes and swords. He just gets the job done, man. He just gets the job done. Someone like Wrath, unfortunately, if you're playing Lin mode, becomes weaker because he's not really going to level up in Lin mode, but he also then joins at a lower level in, uh, in Hector mode, and so he... He just kind of struggles. He's a solid enough unit. I love Nomads, but he just isn't around for enough to get going. And when he is around, he's either... He's just not strong enough to really make a solid impression. Isadora is a solid enough free promote, I guess. She can do enough uh, to merit a spot in B tier, but you can't really solo a lot of enemies with her. Um, she's a good filler paladin that you don't have to invest in. And she has potential um, with combat utility, with rescue utility, but she just is never good enough to really make an, a good enough impression to bust into A tier. Um, Renault, I can I can see a world where you'd give Renault like C tier. I'm gonna give him D tier just because he has about as much availability as Athos and is significantly worse than Athos. Um, He's certainly not unusable. If you really need a staff bot, he's there for you. But he's not going to be the amazing unit that you kind of want uh, that late into the game. Wallace. Poor Wallace. He shows up when you don't need an armor knight. Um, and then leaves and then comes back 
uh, just way too late to really be good. I think he comes back and his promoted stats are worse than Oswin's base stats. Probably not specifically, but that's what it feels like. Um, and if you don't promote him in Lin hard mode, he actually comes back unpromoted, if I remember right. Um, if you use the Knight's Crest on someone else. Yeah, terrible unit. Gates is a pretty good unit. Uh, the only restriction is actually getting him, uh, which means you need to level up all your lords to a max total level of 50 or more. Um, it can be hard for some people if you're not using the lords, but if you are using the lords, he's a nice unit. He's a good reward for that. Uh, Ninian and Nils are easy S tier. One being dancers, two, their rings allow some other shenanigans. High defense, uh, just allowing you to absorb enemies. High attack allows you to kill bosses faster, like the dragon. Um, you can rescue to chain those ring uses, make them last even longer, especially if you're arena abusing. The arena doesn't consider the ring boost into your stats, I'm pretty sure, uh, when calculating your enemies. All around great units. Sarah I'll give B tier because she's your only staff user for like three chapters, um, I guess including Lin mode. Um, she has some more utility. She'll be a fine enough unit, but she'll never be more than a staff bot. Even if you promote her, she's like, okay, I get light magic. And now I'm just a worse Lucius when it comes to light magic. And um, the Galt, I suppose I'll give him... Um... I want to give him B tier, but I think I'll give him C tier because most of the thief utility that you need is done by the time you get him. Um, there's only one or two more items to steal, at which point him and Matthew are pretty much on even keel. Um, he's better in combat, but not by a significant enough margin to really make the difference. Um, so yeah. And there is my 15 minute tier list for FE7. Uh, pretty easy to see. Mobility and availability are top tier. Uh, availability, though, can be counteracted by the sheer power you come in with, because like I said, some of these are busted pre-promotes. Uh, so S tier are the units that are just pretty much almost universally going to be amazing, going to have usefulness. A tier, you're never unhappy to deploy them unless you deliberately didn't train them. They're always going to end up good if you put the effort into them. B tier, a little bit more mix, a little bit more optional, a little bit more. They have some goods, but they have some bads. Availability here can be a killer, as can be limited utility like Thief Utility, um, or late promotions like Hector. C tier units that can get the job done. They're certainly not unusable, uh, but they just kind of struggle a little bit more. Um, they are hard to really rate in that sense because they get the job done they're solid enough they're workable but they just don't have what it takes to really kind of move up on their own they really need support um or like athos they just come in way too late to uh, uh to tier higher a d tier are units that just struggle you can use them and they'll be decent enough but they require a lot of investment and then the F tier units are units that just kind of, you just don't want them around most of the time. Like, when are you going to give up a limited uh, deployment slot from Hector Hard Mode, where you have such few deployment slots, when are you going to give them up for one of these units, unless you're deliberately going out of your way specifically to use these units? You're not. That's the D and the F tier. The only difference is that the D tier has a little bit more potential. <laughs> Anyway, uh, that's been my 15 minute roughly tier list of FE7, uh, Lin mode, hard mode into Hector hard mode. Uh, give your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below, and until next time, this was Zenith signing out. See you in FE8. That's my jam.